If asked in interview, do you know how to explain the CMOS switching curve with respect to the MOSFET IV curves? In today's episode, we will explain that in detail. Stay focused till the end of this episode to hit the bullseye with the answer. Hey guys, welcome back to the computer screen. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. First, the introduction. Next, we will talk about inverter input output behavior. Then, we will discuss inverter logic levels. Then, you will get familiar with the real CMOS switching curves. Next, you will see the MOSFET IV curve. This is the basic IV relationship of the MOSFET. And in the next point, we will extend this concept for CMOS. And here we will end our episode. So that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction. Here you can see this is a PMOS and this is a NMOS. And this is the basic structure of the CMOS. This connection, this entire circuit connection is very prominent. So you can see how the PMOS connection is there. So the PMOS is tied up to VDD and the NMOS is tied down to the ground and here we have our input and here we have our output so keep in mind in the points we are going to discuss about this in this page complementary metal oxide semiconductor that is cmos is a type of metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor that is mosfet fabrication process that uses complementary and symmetrical pairs of p type and n type mosfets for implementation of logic functions so this circuit is used in digital logic circuits if you look at this this is a very analog circuit so this is a mosfet this is a mosfet this combination acts as a building block of any digital circuit. Important characteristics of CMOS devices are high noise immunity and low static power consumption. So these are the reasons why this particular circuit is used as a building block in digital circuits. Since either one transistor of the MOSFET pair is always off, the series combination draws significant power only momentarily during the switching operation. What we are saying here that either this PMOS or NMOS will be on at a time. So depending here we give 1 or 0 and in output we get 0 or 1. In either of these states either this PMOS will be on or the NMOS will be on. So there is a rare situation where both are on. It is not there. So the power consumption is very very low. And CMOS devices are less power hungry as compared to its counterparts as NMOS logic or TTL. Hence, the CMOS logic is preferred over the other logics so far available in our design. Consequently, PMOS is used to integrate a high density of logic functions on a VLSI chip. Because of the, the power hungry reason and there is noise immunity low static power consumption so all these things make it a essential candidate to be integrated in high density logic functions in a vlsi chip here we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide inverter input output behavior here in this slide we will look into the basic input output how the output changes with respect to the input here in this slide the CMOS inverter uses a NMOS and a PMOS transistor in complementary push-pull configuration. So the picture we have shown in last slide, I have said tied up and tied down. So these are also called push and pull. This kind of uh, structure the CMOS inverter is. And for a logic one, the output, the PMOS will be on and the NMOS will be off. So this is the picture. So PMOS here you can see it is on and the current is flowing like this and the NMOS is off so this path is broken so nothing is happening in this path so this is for logic 1 in output we have logic 1 and in input correspondingly we have 0 this particular operation is explained here and next we have for a logic 0 output the PMOS is off and the NMOS is on so here you can see here we have input 1 and we have the output 0 so here the PMOS is off so this path is broken only this path is working and you can see this way the current is flowing so this is the basic cmos operation there is a very 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 basic operation how the cmos operates as a digital candidate to make space for all the logic bits that is digital 
in nature with its analog circuit inbuilt we have analog circuit here so you can see this is a mosfet this is analog one right in nature however it is functioning as a digital unit that means when the input is zero output is one and when the input is one output is zero so this is the behavior of the cmos circuit now here we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide inverter logic levels here we have a very simple graph here so you can see here now this is v in this is v out right and this is the ground level so this level is ground and this level is vdd right in this picture we see the transition right so v in changes from zero level to the high level and correspondingly the output changes from high towards the low and here you can see the high is a band here and the low is a band here and in between we have a region which is forbidden that means we cannot say either this is zero or one this is the basic digital logic and let me explain with the bullets we need to define boundaries when the signal is considered to be high that is equal to one or low that is zero these boundaries we have to define by ourselves in the digital circuit these are called the logic levels there are ranges of voltages rather than absolute voltage number so here you can see this is a range and this is a range so we have ranges rather than actual numbers as a one or zero any voltage between the two bands are unacceptable by the logic level so as i said so this band this region is forbidden region that means we do not accept any values from here during the switching of the voltage obviously cross no man's land when the switching happens right this from this to this direction with respect to the change in the input that is from this to this direction so this no man's land that means this one it is neither of the land of the zero or not the land of the one so however the line crosses from here to here right so the no man's land is crossed during the switching operation and here at this point you can see the switching operation is happening so this is a good question for an interview right say that there is a forbidden region but when does the inverter goes through that region that means at some time when any of the inverter voltage that is either the input voltage or the output voltage or both decide momentarily in the forbidden region this question is very good question for the interview so get prepared for this very fundamental yet very important question however this could be asked in a tricky way so that you cannot imagine the answer so here i am preparing you for this right because in the interview maybe a simple question is asked in a tricky manner think of that whenever you are reading anything think different angle from which any question can be asked so here we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide here in this slide we will talk about the real cmos switching curves those are our description and here is our graph so side by side i will explain this when i am explaining the bullets here and real inverter the output does not switch instantaneously so you can see this switching is not instantaneous it takes some time however small this takes some time the two there are two critical points on the real car which occur when the slope is minus 1 so these are the two points we are talking about here VIL is the input low voltage which corresponds to an output high voltage of slope minus 1 so you can see VIL here we are talking about VIL is the maximum input voltage guaranteed to be recognized as low so remember this and with this particular graph VIH is the input voltage which corresponds to an output low voltage of slope minus 1 so you can see here it is minus 1 again and this is vih vih is the minimum input voltage guaranteed to be recognized as high so these are terms related to the cmos circuit please remember them now voh is the output voltage when the output logic level is 1 here you can see voh and here the output logic level reached 1 and voh is the minimum output voltage guaranteed when driving a high these are the different parts of the switching curve so this entire graph is for the switching curve and i am explaining bits and pieces of it vol is the output voltage when the output logic level is 0 this one vol is the maximum output voltage guaranteed when driving a low folks i noticed a mistake here 
OH, right? However, this is OH, this is uh, the VOH, and this is VOL. So, this is V output, right? And this is V input. And this should be here V and correction is, however, this is this is the VOH. So, here we have talked about VOH, and this is the VOH here, and VOL is here. So, this one. So, this is the output, V output here, and V input. There, there was a mistake, right? I have just done correction to you right now. Here you can see VTH, the threshold voltage, the point at which V out equal to V in. So here you can see this is I think Y equal to M X format, right? This, this straight line. Here at this point, right, we have the V out equal to V in. So this V out and this V in are same. Here this one is threshold voltage. And we are done here with this particular slide. So let's move on to the next slide. MOSFET IV car. So, in this particular slide, we will talk about the basic regions in a MOSFET IV car. Why we are talking about this? Because we extend this concept to the CMOS switching car. And if I do not touch base this point, however, you know already this point, the instantaneous correlation between the MOSFET IV car versus the CMOS IV car, it will become very difficult. For you. So here goes our bullets and here is our curve. You can recall this uh, graph that is VDS versus ID, right? I think you know already this. So let me explain with the bullets here. Ohmic or linear region is a region where the current IDS increases with the value of the VDS. Here you can see this is the ohmic region, right? So here you can see the voltage and current increases almost like a Y equal to M X format. Although it is not correct or absolute however there is a tilted curve here but however you can see it's uh, more or less ohmic here so this is called the ohmic region i have marked in the graph also next in the saturation region the mosfets have their ids constant in spite of increase of vds so here you can see this green color region here defined right this green color region is the saturation region here no matter we increase the vds right the ids remains constant here right at each of this curve the ids remain constant saturation sets in once vds exceeds the value of the pinch of voltage that is vp now this is also a good question for you as an interview you remember the definition of the pinch of which you got in your textbook under this condition, the device will act like a crossed switch through which the saturated value of IDS flows. So, you can see here the pinch off happened, right? And uh, here it became the flat one, right? No matter we are increasing the VDS high, but IDS remaining constant. As a result, the operating region is chosen whenever the MOSFETs are required to perform switching operation. This saturation region is chosen for the switching operation in digital logics so this is the importance that's why i kept this slide so that you know what is the significance of what region from its analog operation when we are transiting into its digital interpretation cutoff region is a region in which the mosfet will be off as there will be no current flowing through it you can see this is the cutoff region marked in red right so in this region no current flows through the mosfet in this region, the MOSFET behaves like an open switch and thus used when they are required function as the electronic switches. What is the significance of this cutoff region? Open switch operation. Open switch operation is achieved from the cutoff region and switching operation is achieved from the saturation region. So, we have explained the significance of the MOSFET IV curve when we see it through the lens of the digital logic, how each of the region contributes to the digital operation here in this slide. We are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. CMOS and its IV curve relation. So, here we will explain the CMOS switching curve which we have already came across a couple of slides back. But here what we will do, we will correlate with the MOSFET regions, the regions, different regions here explained in the previous slide. So, this is the entirely pictorial slide. So, you do not have any text here. Please pay attention according to that. So, here is our NMOS and PMOS. So, these are the structures you are well aware of with respect to the semiconductor fabrication, right? The NMOS is termed as MN and the PMOS is termed as MP in the below graph. So, here in this graph, you can see first, let me take a tour, right? This is V out and this is V in, right? For the MOSFET. And we have defined different reads. So, this is the switching curve you can see, right? 
it is going from this switching curve we have stretched the graph so that you can understand it well however this happens in a very short time period so you can see this from this has been zoomed so that you can understand each different region so this is region 1 this is region 2 this is region 3 this is region 4 and this is region 5 now you are familiar with the picture let me point the different regions which are correlating with the mosfet regions here the mn is off in this region 1 and mp is in the linear region off means it's in the cutoff region here mn is in saturation region and mp is in the linear region in region 2 mn and mp you are familiar from the above picture right and in this region 3 both are in saturation as we have said the saturation region is used for the switching operation next here in the region 4 we have mn in linear and mp in the saturation region so this is for region 4 and in region 5 we have mn in the linear region while the mp is the off that means the cutoff region now you are well enough equipped to answer the interview question when asked that how the cmos switching is happening with respect to its mosfet operation of the each individual component that is the nmos and the pmos so i think we are here here and we're done here with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislike, put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.